and some of you watching this today, may not have even heard of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And if you read through the book of Acts, there are some theologians and scholars that will tell you that was only in the apostles' day and time in the scripture. But now we are, we are seeing the rebirthing of that title. And yes, I know what I said on last week. There are some true apostles in the earth. But we also have people that are jockeying for that title as seemingly to them it's a promotional opportunity. But when a true apostle of God comes in the earth and is in the earth, what they do is this. They emphasize, they emphasize from the very beginning that Jesus Christ is Lord and the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They just don't come with profound doctrines and teaching. They want to make sure that you have the source or the soil that they plant their seed into. And that soil will cause that seed to grow and to materialize. The Holy Ghost, once he comes into your life, he is the retainer of the word of God because he is the word of God that Jesus Christ has sent forth. It is the spirit of Jesus Christ being shed abroad into our hearts that leads and guides us into all manner of truth. And all manner of truth is inclusive of everything that you're involved with in your life that goes on around you or in your space or things that will befall you or happen and will be. Just give, let me give you an example of something that the Holy Ghost will do. The Holy Ghost, when he has come into your life, will speak to you about friends and people in your life and will show you things about your own self that need to be corrected. He will show you everyday things. For instance, on this past Friday, I had two experiences with the Holy Spirit on last Friday. One, I was on my way to work and God showed me another car that was going to come around a corner and hit me off. And if I kept at the pace and the speed in which I was going, that we would collide and show Sure enough, as he spoke it, it happened the same way. So I immediately slowed down my speed. And as soon as I realized that here come the car that had I kept in pace with what I was going, I would have hit it. Then I had gone uh, to a certain area in the place where I worked. And God showed me a specific individual coming into the room as I was leaving. But we spoke. He showed me that in an open vision. And as I was about to leave the room, here comes the gentleman. And we spoke. And it was exactly who the Holy Spirit said it would be. So God also shares practical things with you as well as spiritual things with you. God shows you events even devastating events that are about to happen. The Holy Spirit will also show you people that mean you no good. And one of the things that you've heard me preach on social media, for those of you who have been watching for a while, I preached the message about why am I here? But it wasn't until I asked the Holy Spirit, gave me the specific question to ask, reveal the heart of the individual to me. And that would answer both questions. And the Lord began to reveal and show me the heart of the person and show me that this person wasn't as in tune or as involved with me as they thought they were. And some of us need that leading and guiding in our lives, but we need to receive the Holy Ghost first because he is there to teach us all manner of truth. Now, you, some of you may have even heard in the church where people are disputing that you should be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When plainly in Acts the 19th chapter, the fifth verse, it says, when they heard this, they were all baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you also need to be baptized, be rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is in the likeness of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It's God didn't die. 
Let me make that plain. God sent Jesus to die upon Calvary's cross. The Holy Ghost did not die. The Holy Ghost comes as the afterwork of what Jesus Christ has done to indwell men's heart. So we have to be baptized in the name of the one who died for us, in the name of the one who was given the authority to, to lead all men out of sin, because it's in the name of Jesus Christ that every knee shall bow in both heaven and earth. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, he is the bridge that leads us back to the Father and the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter that he will be with you both forevermore. So it's in the name of of Jesus Christ, the one who died for us, because when we're buried, we're buried in the likeness of his death. When we arise, we arise to walk in the newness of life as he walked in the newness of life. Now, let me break it down. When he died upon Calvary, he took every single sin of men upon himself. And he nailed it to the cross. And he put the devil to an open shame. He was buried in a tomb and he was there for three days and he went down into the earth and into the lower parts of hell and, and fought Satan and took away from him the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So he died to fight to kill sin so that sin would remain dead and then he takes the power of the, of the sting of death and the power of sin from Satan that he no longer has the mastery or the keys to lock you up and imprison you. Jesus has taken the keys of death, hell, and the grave so that we might be released from death and never enter into hell. Then on the third day, he arises with all power and authority in his hand, and now he is changed in his image to the spiritual being. That's why when he was initially seen by his disciples, he told them, do not touch me because I have not yet ascended to my father. And then when he returned, he walks through a wall and he appears unto them. So he is now changed from this natural form to back to his spiritual form. So it shows us that when we're buried in the water and we're baptized and we arise, we're to be baptized in Jesus' name so that we can walk in the same way that he walked. We die to sin when we go down. That's why the scriptures say, behold, all things are become brand new. Because the purpose and intent is not to go down in the, in the baptism to rise up, to walk in the same ways of life before. But you should really consciously think about it before you're baptized. Are you really ready to change your lifestyle for the Lord? And this is where a lot of people make the mistake is in that not realizing what water baptism is for and the purpose and the authority of Jesus' name when they go down. Because when you go down in Jesus' name, he should be removing sin from your life, and he does. For those who have a heart to truly repent, he removes sins from ever from their hearts, and he causes them to rise up to walk in the newness of the life, ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost does not come into a dirty vessel. He comes into a vessel that has been prepared to receive him and then he comes in to dwell with that person forever.